Hey there guys, in this video I want to take you through four different ways in how to find the equation of a cubic function. So it all depends on what information was given. So they could either give you the x-intercepts, the inflection point or the turning points and you then need to find the equation to the functions using the different formulas and methods that I'm about to show you right now. Okay, so let's start with the standard form of a cubic function. That is y equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now, if they gave you the equation in the standard form, note that d represents the y value for the y-intercept. Also notice that a cubic function generally has three x-intercepts, or three roots. However, depending on where the x-axis is with respect to the graph, we might have only two or one x-intercept. Now, if it was two x-intercepts, notice that the x-axis cuts through one of the turning points of the cubic function. And if it only has one x-intercept, the turning points are either both above the x-axis or both below the x-axis. Now, let's have a look at our first example. Here you are given all three x-intercepts, negative 3, 2, 5, and also a random point, or maybe not so random, this, in fact, is the y-intercept. To find the equation of this cubic function, we'll use the following formula. a times x minus r1, x minus r2, and x minus r3, where r is the roots. So the negative 3, the 2, and the 5. Now substitute these values into your equation, and you'll end up with a times x plus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 5. Okay, we are almost there. Now, you just need to substitute a point to work out A. So, substitute the y-intercept of 0 and 60. 0 should go with the x values, and 60 should go with the y value. Now, simplify that. Divide both sides by 30, and A is equal to 2. You now have the equation of the cubic function. Except, this is not in the standard form. This is in the factorized form. Now you'd have to multiply everything out, this is quite a lot of algebra, but you end up with 2x cubed minus 8x squared minus 22 plus 60. And that's the equation of the cubic function. Now looking at our second example, here we are given an example of a cubic function that only has two x-intercepts. And notice that second x-intercept is also the turning point of the graph. So we'll tweak our formula slightly. Instead of having three distinct brackets, we'll have the second bracket be identical to the third, and therefore we'll get rid of the third and just square the second one. Keep in mind that the bracket you are squaring should always be linked to the root that is also a turning point. So this means we have x plus 2 and x minus 3 squared. You now would like to substitute a point to find a's value, as we did for the first example. So here I've given the y-intercept again so that we could do that. It doesn't have to be the y-intercept, but it just is again in this case. Maybe for another example, I'll choose a different point. But substitute 0 and 18. x is 0, y is negative 18. And simplify that. Negative 3 squared is 9, and 2 times 9 is 18. Then dividing both sides by 18, we get a as negative 1. And with that, we have the equation of the cubic function. Except this is again only in the factorized form. You'll have to multiply this out further if you want it in the standard form. So here I've done it for you. You can maybe just pause the video if you'd like to go through the algebra. But the final answer is negative x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x minus 18. And moving on to our third example. Here we have a cubic function which looks slightly different to the ones that we've been dealing with because this cubic function doesn't have any turning points. Notice the graph is always increasing. However, it does have an inflection point. There's also another random point given, 4 and 17. That point we'll use a bit later. But first, for the inflection point, you always want to use this formula y equal to a minus p cubed plus q. Now p and q in this formula represents the x and y values 
at the inflection point. So P would be 2 and Q would be 9. Substitute that in and you'll get Y equal to A bracket X minus 2 cubed plus 9. Now to find A, we can do what we've been doing for all the other questions. We just substitute any other point that is on the graph. This time I chose not to give you a Y intercept but rather some other point, 4 and 17. So let's substitute this point. 4 is your X value, 17 is your Y value. Simplify and solve A for this equation. So you'll have to minus the 9 on both sides, also cubing that bracket. And we get 8 equal to 8A, which means A is equal to 1. Now, this is the equation of the function. But this is in the inflection point form, not the standard form. To get it into the standard form, you just have to multiply out. So x minus 2 multiplied by itself 3 times and then if you plus 9 at the end you end up with x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x plus 1 and that's the equation for the function. Now moving on to example number 4 here we have a Cartesian plane with another cubic function and the coordinates of the y-intercept are given also the coordinates of one of the turning points are also given. Okay, and that turning point is 4 and negative 36. Now, part of the equation is also given. We have y equal to x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And you might think that no information is given here. But remember the a that is supposed to be in front of x cubed? That a value is given as 1. Since there's no number written in front of x cubed, we can assume that to be the invisible one. Also, d is the y-intercept of the cubic function. That means d is 12. And therefore, the only two variables left for us to find is b and c. Okay, now for any two variables that are unknown, you can only calculate it if you have two equations. I can find a first equation by substituting a point in this case, the turning point that was given, 4 and negative 36. So, we'll do direct substitution for that point. Substitute x with 4 and y with negative 36. Simplify this equation by squaring and cubing. Then, adding your constants, 64 plus 12 plus 36 is 112. Divide the entire equation by a factor of 4 and then make C the subject of the formula. So we end up with C equal to negative 4B minus 28. Now that's a first equation. You still now need to find a second equation. And since we don't have any other points on this graph to substitute, we've already substituted the y-intercept and the turning point, I need to resort to this fancy tactic I'm going to show you now. We know that the derivative of a function is its gradient, right? Now at the turning point, where x is equal to 4, the gradient is 0. So that means the derivative, where x is 4, is 0. This would be my second equation. First, I'm going to find the derivative, the derivative of the original function. So that is 3x squared plus 2b plus c equal to m, the gradient. And since I know my gradient is 0, where x is 4, I'm going to substitute x with 4 and the gradient with 0. Now let me simplify this equation. 3 times 4 squared is 48. 2b times 4 is 8b plus c equal to 0. Make c again the subject of the formula. So we end up with c equal to negative 8b minus 48. This is your second equation. Now we can do simultaneous equations by equating the two equations for c. Now grouping your like terms, you get negative 4b plus 8b equal to negative 48 plus 28. This gives us 4b equal to negative 20 and b is equal to negative 5. Now that you have b, make sure to substitute back into one of the other equations, doesn't matter which one, but I'll just go with equation number 1 substitute b with negative 5 and you'll calculate c as negative 8. 
So this is now the equation of the function x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 12. Okay, and that's it. That's how you find the equation of a cubic function. Make sure you remember these four different methods with the four different formulas and you'll be okay when a question like this pops up in the exam. Good luck and I'll see you in the next video.